All right, welcome back. I just want to remind you about that uh, developing story that we are monitoring this morning with regards to taxis being set alight in the Johannesburg CBD. We just had a chat with uh, Wayne Minas, a police spokesperson, uh, Johannesburg Metro police spokesperson, and he was telling us that four uh, taxis were set alight, six were damaged, happened around 8 o'clock uh, this morning. Uh, with regards to the circumstances surrounding uh, who was responsible for it, we don't know that at this stage, but we will keep on that story. It's a developing story, no doubt. We'll get a reporter on the ground there give you the very latest there are roads that have been cordoned off closed off uh, we will get you the very latest in terms of those roads that have been closed so stand by keep it locked on to sabc news election coverage continues the democratic alliance is taking its campaign to imala senin pomalanga dear leader john stienes and is there but we also find our sabc news reporter abongile dumako uh, brother dumako very good morning to you so i understand that uh, john stienes has uh, just spoken if i'm if you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what did he say? Certainly, plain uh, John Stenis is just taking the podium, addressing these uh, candidates, uh, councillor candidates for both Emma Lacheni local municipality as well as the uh, Steve Church local municipality here in Mpumalanga. John Stenis is saying that he's confident for a win in this municipality for he believes that they are councillors, candidates, they are activists on the ground, have gone all out to make sure that they manage to attract those potential voters who have that power to put them on the seat and make them be those ones who are actually, you know, uh, controlling the uh, Malacheni local municipality as well as, you know, a uh, still Chate municipality. John Stenazen uh, joining us now actually to actually expand to some of the things that he did speak about. John Stenazen, the leader of the DA, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Great to have you. In Bumalanga, you've been all over the country. So far, what have you seen that needs, uh, you know, urgent attention from yeah, the well, Seven provinces this week I've travelled around. And the story is really to be the same in, in towns and cities across the country. Service delivery is collapsing. People are not getting the services they want. Towns without water, sewage running down the streets, people sitting without jobs. They need the government that's going to get things done there. And they have been coming out in their numbers to listen to the DA's message of hope and change and to how we have a plan to get things done in each of those towns. What's that plan? Well, that plan sets out in our manifesto. It's a seven-point plan. It focuses on the seven basic things you need in any municipality to get it working, starting with clean and accountable governments, a safe community, a community that's delivering services, a community that is making itself electricity independent of the national government's failings, ensuring that you've got local economic development so we can attract jobs and lots of them, and then ensuring that, uh, that we have opportunities for young people to be able to advance in, uh, in in those towns and cities around South Africa. Another thing that stands out when one drives around Emma Lachlany and Steve Twitter, the issue of water continues to trouble locals here. Yes, water is a big problem and we've got, uh, we're a water scarce country, we're going to have to change our relationship with water, but municipalities are going to have to invest a lot more in water infrastructure. There's no use fixing the upstream and reservoirs if the water reticulation system, the pups, are bursting every week. Just this last week in, in four, to, four to five municipalities does and people sit for days without water because their water leaks the in pups are breaking they, some of them are 40 years old they've never been replaced we need to make sure we replace that infrastructure and roll out infrastructure to areas that don't have water and this means that municipalities are going to have to spend more money on the basics not on 23 million rand stadiums and 2.7 million rand wendy houses they're going to have to spend it on basic services so that people have the dignity of those basic services let's quickly go to the eastern cape now oscar mabuyan has been in your lips for quite a while now with the 450,000 rand Winima Tigizela Mandela's memorial service. The DA seems very concerned about this. What are you going to do? Well, we've already uh, made sure that uh, that uh, that we are going to go and lay criminal charges. We're also going to be pursuing this matter through the parliamentary uh, committees in parliament. Um, I think that it is it is an outrage that you've got a premier who stands accused of that on the back of a MEC who's now in jail for, for uh, allegedly for murder. On, on top of all these scandals that we've seen around Around the, around the expenditure on stadiums, on uh, on infrastructure that uh, that has not been uh, serviced. Uh, yesterday I was in Limpopo. There's a project there with a water reservoir. It's been 95% complete for the last five years. Uh, in uh, many, in Mokalakwena as well, the stadium that was built there has just simply collapsed. There's there's no, there's no service delivery there. All of these things show that that you've got governments in place in these in these areas and towns that cannot get things done. We on the other hand have got a good story to tell in Midval, in Koga, in, in Nelson Mandela Bay. And the city of Cape Town about how we're actually getting things done for people in those municipalities.
Yesterday we saw, in fact, the day before, the night before last yesterday, a hostage incident type happening with the military veterans and the two ministers at St George's Irene. What's your GA's view on what we've seen come out of that hotel? Yeah. Well, let me just say that uh, from the outset, I don't condone violence and I don't condone uh, unlawful behaviour at all. But I do understand the frustration that those veterans and others are feeling. They've been made promises year after year, election after election, that they're going to be taken care of, and those promises never materialise. The frustration is now boiled up to such degree that they are taking drastic action um, like they took. And I think it's time that government got serious about their concerns. I'm busy dealing with a matter in Pretoria where military veterans were given houses by the government. They were then evicted from those houses, put in temporary accommodation. The National Department is not paying the rent there. They're about to be evicted again. Uh, and the National Department just won't do anything about it. This is no way to treat military veterans. It's no way to treat people who uh, have been a part of uh, uh, of defending democracy in South Africa uh, and I think it's a disgrace and I think uh, maybe government should take some of the 1.7 billion rand they spend every year on VIP protection 8 million rand per VIP per year and spend that on our veterans, spend it on our pensioners spend it on our young children in South Africa instead of protecting fat cats and keeping them safe uh, while the rest of us have to deal with crime on a daily basis John thanks and good luck with your company Thank you so much, great to be with you SABC Thanks so much, John Stenhazen is the leader of the DA uh, speaking there after having addressed these uh, party members here at uh, Malahleni Municipality, formerly Weedbank here in Mpumalang. Lane, it's back to you in Johannesburg. All right.